sisters. As you can see, he's next to the sister. As you can see, I just got a gun, and I got this gun today. I actually bought. Bought it about a week ago. Picked it up today. Now, I couldn't really afford this gun. I had to make some budget cuts, and, and I, it's going to be a tight, you know, last week before I get paid again. But I, I decided to buy it anyway. It cost me about 400 bucks. I couldn't really spare that money, but I ended up doing so because it's important. And I'm going to show you why. Basically, I did it because Jesus advised me to. And you might be thinking, what are you talking about? Well, the fact is, the Bible teaches that Christians should have a weapon. And I believe Christians should have guns today. And here's why. In Luke chapter 22, ver verse 36 to 38, this is Jesus Christ speaking. And Jesus says, Then said he unto them, But now, he that hath the purse, let him take it, and likewise a scrip, and he that hath no Those who believe a works-based salvation or who preach a works-based salvation tend to be worldly people in comparison to those who preach that salvation's 100% free that you that you can't lose your salvation. Those people tend to be very godly in general. Right, and it's funny, it seems like it'd be a contradiction, but actually it's just a fulfillment of the Bible. Second Corinthians chapter 11, starting in verse three, I think illustrates this. But I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with chapter. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself tra is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed into ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to the works. Implies strongly that they have a life of secret sin in their life, while they preach all... Preach all the all the all the all the while they preach all the all the while preaching a works-based salvation, another gospel. It's funny. I, I I can't think of a better example of guys. Yes. That's the, the that's the type of guys they are. But you know what's funny? These guys preach a work preach a works-based salvation, and they're known as the conservative badasses. Badasses and art. Are preachers amongst liberal Christians that's what they're known as these guys are worldly these guys are a bunch of worldly back they have no backbone they're soft watered-down preachers they won't stand against anything the, the, the hardest thing they'll say homosexuality is sin that's the hardest thing these guys say
hardest thing. thing they'll say Is this you know this practice that we have if anyone is there been ever been involved in this movement knows what I'm talking about when I say it this practice they have it basically when they pray speaking to the devil right? this practice they have it basically when they pray speaking Speaking to the devil So forth now, uh, let me explain to you a little bit of how this goes for those of you who are not familiar with it Basically, it's like you usually happens in a group prayer and you're praying in a group And what happens is you come to a moment of the prayer where you just start whoever's leading the prayer Just automatically just out of nowhere starts talking to Satan and basically so the only thing that he says the devil. He does, it says he dared not, he durst not bring a raising accusation against him, but said, the Lord do thee. That's all he told him. But the point is, the Bible says that this is something we should not be, we should not be bringing raising accusations against the devil. Okay, and as a matter of fact, this is more more significant because the book of Jude is actually about false prophets. I don't think it's a the coincidence. I don't think it's a the coincidence. I don't think it's a the coincidence. These people usually have like direct conversation with the devil. Alright, and not, not worshiping or anything, or not praying to him. It's like a more of an insult towards him. And uh, uh you know, but it's still, you know, it's still bizarre retarded that these people usually have like direct conversations with the devil all right and not not worshiping or anything we're not praying to him 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 and uh, uh you know but it's still you know it's still bizarre retarded and not found anywhere in scripture there's actually looting no Examples of the scripture, and as a matter of fact, scripture condemns the the idea of bringing raiding accusation against the devil because Michael the. Michael the archangel didn't even dare to do that, but there's some people walking on this earth who are no longer, you know, they no longer have the chance to get saved, and the Bible refers to you know refers to this as becoming a reprobate becoming rejected of God and uh, but they keep rejecting God and it comes to a point where God hates that person and will blind that person and make sure that person never gets saved this is I'm talking about, I'm talking about unsaved people who never got you know people who have never been saved and who keep rejecting God to a point where God starts to hate them and God in fact hates these people will love them no more and make Done. They're done for them, and it says he will cast them away or reject them, in other words. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Who's sending them the delusion? God is sending them the delusion. 
And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. 